in a moment. Now, before we go to Lee Rhiannon, who's uh, just getting herself settled in, uh, in Canberra, I'll go to this grab of her at a function a couple of years ago and tell you a little bit about it afterwards. This is a con job. It's not about our children. It's a political agenda about trying to say we've, we've, you know, we've delivered for family values. It's just not true. I just wanted to say, um, following from what Josh said... Well, the important bit about that qu uh, clip was that was a protest about internet filters, but the gentleman that uh, Lee Rannan, Rannan shared the podium there with, the microphone with, was a man who's involved with the truther movement. He's Herewood Fenton, who was the founder of the 9-11 Oz website. I'll just show you that website now, and it's one of these sort of kooky and I think offensive websites that talks about the fact that the 9-11 towers were not actually brought down by al-Qaeda terrorists, uh, and some people of course go even further and suggest that the Americans themselves brought down these towers to kill innocent people and give themselves a justification for war. So it's pretty loopy, pretty extreme and pretty offensive stuff. And uh, Lee Rhiannon has met with uh, uh, another member of that group uh, subsequently, uh, 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 Mr John Bursell. So uh, uh, now that she's in the studio there, Senator Lee Rhiannon, uh, thanks for joining us. I just want to kick off with that now that we've brought it up. Uh, how do you explain actually associating with these 9-11 truthers? I'm not associating with 9-11 truthers uh, when you're an MP and it's certainly my style. I see that the job is about meeting with constituents and I had a meeting with some of those people but I in no way endorse what they're saying. And just because you meet with doctors doesn't mean you're a doctor. Uh, you meet with um, all sorts of people in this job and it doesn't mean that you then take on their ideas. And clearly the 9-11 tragedy was perpetrated by terrorists, Al-Qaeda, committed some of the worst crimes of the century uh, when, when those Twin Towers collapsed. And that's clearly on the record and has been rightly condemned. Well, you were happy to join that protest, uh, admittedly, over another issue with Mr Fenton. But, yeah. of course, Mr Bursell... I, when I, didn't he, when, know who Mr. I didn't know who Mr Fenton was. I well, had no you know, idea It might have been an idea Mr. to check Fenton that out. Was. But you certainly knew who Mr Bursell was because he introduced himself yeah. at another function, told you about the 9-11 Truther movement, gave you some DVDs and organised a meeting with you and subsequently you did have a, a proper meeting with him, didn't you? Yes, there was a number of um, architects and engineers who wanted to talk about the issue and yes, I met with them. I meet with a whole range of people and that is part I see myself as being available for the constituents. I'm a senator for New South Wales, have various portfolios and I get out there to do my job. But, uh all politicians vet who they meet, they're very careful about who they would associate with and aren't the 9-11 truthers just far too out there for any politician to give credence to? Well, I've clearly answered the question. I didn't engage with pe these people. I don't endorse what they said. I had one meeting with them. The video that you showed really has misrepresented the situation. No, I've been um, very clear regularly. about that. You, you, just, you, just, you were there at a protest with that man. Yes. But with Mr Bursell, he gave you the DVDs. Did you, um, did you look at the DVDs? No, I haven't looked at the DVDs. It was one meeting, as I say. When you're a politician, you meet with all people all the time, and that's certainly my style. But you've been involved in the, the BDS movement and uh, got a lot of criticism for that anti-Israeli stand. Shouldn't you be extra careful then in associating with these people who, who were suggesting that it was not Al-Qaeda who, who brought down the Twin Towers? I'm very responsible how I take my work forward. We're working on a range of issues and that's something that I'm really proud of. We have an excellent team in the federal parliament, representatives in all levels of government, working on the issues that matter to mainstream Australia, despite what Mr Albanese and Mr Sinodina said. Oh, they were so off the mark about our local council work. We're out there doing environmental work, delivering services in the very areas where Mr Albanese comes from, and he would know this. Oh, we've really led the way on community gardens, were an inv a state-of-the-art environmentally friendly uh, swimming pool that is being um, attracting interest around the country. I'm just, I've just lost you actually because of my earpiece, so maybe we'll just have to pause for a minute. Okay. I'm sorry about this. Well, uh, you, you, you mentioned uh, those local government issues and of course Anthony Albanese has mentioned the, um, 
the BDS program, uh, the actions against Israel that you're associated with, the boycotts, sanctions and, and dis divestments. Um, you, you, uh, you, you must agree that they are not the issues that local governments are normally involved in. Why would the people of Marrickville or wherever want their local government involved in some sort of protest against, against Israel, especially when it doesn't even match with your own federal leaders' views on the, on the Israel issue? I'll have to hold this in. The, the, the BDS isn't the policy of the Greens and the situation is that um, it was actually Labor councillors who also voted for that on Marrickville, something Mr Albanese fails to mention. But our councillors there worked very hard bringing forward a whole number of services for the local people and the vote that they received in the local government shows the support they have and the Greens gained 32% of the vote in the recent local government elections. Uh, the Labor picked up 36% of the vote. With each election we're getting close to Mr Albanese's local Labor and that's why there's a lot of misinformation. Well, these issues, these issues uh, really highlight what uh, Anthony Albanese and Arthur Sinodinus were saying earlier, don't they? That the Greens are involved in these fringe issues issues right on the fringe, the extreme left fringe of politics, I suppose, when in fact you tend to get elected on a platform of caring for the environment. Do they have a, do they have a point that the Greens are not realistic and don't actually deliver what perhaps most of their voters expect? Oh, look, the Greens have well and truly delivered and just sticking firstly with local government. First off, um, Mr Albanese failed to acknowledge where the federal government is actually putting in funding to Leichhardt Council to again bring forward one of these environmentally state-of-the-art swimming pools with co-generation. So that's where you have Labor at a federal level assisting local government. But across the board, this idea that we, we do fringe issues is really missing the money. We're out there with many mainstream issues, uh, advocating for more funding for public education, the important issue of uh, more national parks, um, the big one of public transport and the all-important real passion of the Greens is addressing real action on climate change. They're things what we're working on all the time and Labor in many ways, Mr Albanese was arguing against himself. He knows that w why he has been successful as managing government business in in the House is because we've worked together and we've been successful in well, passing th more than 350 pieces of legislation. So how do you that feel shows about that, that this that, that, Parliament how, has actually been quite productive. You, you, you must feel quite resentful about that in that you're in a formal alliance with the Labor Party, they're introducing a carbon tax thanks to you and yet uh, you've got senior Labor figures constantly out now undermining the Greens and in fact describing you as, as, as extreme likening you even to the left-wing One Nation. Look, I think that reflects more on Labor. Uh, we're not in here to be just sort of work, you know, scoring points off um, those parties. And the key thing is that we're getting out there working on the issue like this week in Parliament. So much of what we are debating in the Senate and the House of Representatives comes from key issues that the Greens have advocated for. Like, despite what Mr Albanese said, is the super trawler, we've been able to win that legislation because of strong community action and because we have Greens in Parliament. Just a few months ago, the government, the Labor government, was supporting the uh, super trawler. Marriage equality is being debated in the Senate as we speak. That's because the Greens are here, strong community backing, and we've been able to get those issues onto the agenda. You... And that's how we will continue to work. Issues that matter to the majority of Australians as things that we will always take up. You've had some uh, poor performances in state I've election campaigns. You again. <laughs> okay, oh. you just pop that back in. You have had some uh, some poor performances in some state election campaigns and some and the local government uh, elections of late. Do you fear that the party has lost a lot of revel uh, relevance uh, now that Bob Brown has retired and that Christine Milne is struggling to connect with the community in the same way? Oh, not at all. Christine's doing a fantastic job and I mean what I see is a fantastic advantage. Bob Brown is our elder states person, our first person to take that title on. He's been out there as active as he ever was. He was in Sydney recently for a big action around save, saving uh, the Kimberley area and Christine is so active. I've really appreciated. She's come to New South Wales a number of times. We've been able to campaign together on issues uh, in regional areas which she identified as a priority when she came in to the job. 
What's your view of the way the major parties are conducting politics at the moment? Do you support these personal attacks on Tony Abbott about his handling of women's issues? I certainly do find that uh, many, not just women, many people are troubled about uh, Mr Abbott's, Abbott's approach to women. I spend a lot of my time when Parliament's not sitting on the road doing meetings, um, for, um, informally meeting with people about their issues, and it does come up. And again, I think what it reminds us when you raise that point is that la Labor, and unfortunately uh, Mr Albanese often misses the mark here a bit, like the, the issue for the progressive side of politics should be addressing the real threat yeah, of an Abbott-led government. Would you just be just as comfortable with personal attacks and examination of the Prime Minister? Well, um, I haven't seen the... If the Prime Minister punched a wall, I think that that should be examined, but that's clearly not her style, and she's not doing that. What Mr Abbott did was very serious, and clearly that is relevant to how he works today. What he did? Because what, you're, you're saying what he did was very serious? Well, um, the reports that I have read, I found quite troubling. And aren't you, you, jumping, to aren't you just jumping to conclusions there? I mean, you've got no evidence that he did anything. Well, uh, I have read the reports. I've seen a number of articles where the, um, the statements have been confirmed. But generally, you do get the impression the way Mr Abbott conducts himself, being so negative about you know, when there's so many critical issues that we have to deal with, he's very negative and he uh, reminds me as though like he's still back in student politics. Well, of course. Well, thanks very much for your time, Lee Rhiannon. I appreciate you joining us. Sorry for those technical problems at the start, but uh, appreciate uh, your ability to come up and mount your arguments uh, with the Liberal Party and the Labor Party all pointing out now that some of the extreme views of the Greens, even though, of course, the government remains in alliance with the Greens. So thanks very much, uh, Senator Lee Rhiannon. We'll be back after the break Thank to... You.